guys, Darren from Aviation in Action, doing this week's tutorial on the cameras. But before I jump onto cameras, I did have a message earlier on this week, someone asking me to just to run through again about the books for number crunching and dot, spo uh, dot spotting. So the books I recommend are the Ministry Aircraft Markings book, and inside we'll have majority of um, aircraft from around the world. So for example, this one here is from, let's pick this one here. So we've got the uh, the RAF Tornadoes, still in this book. So we have the serial number here, then the aircraft itself, which is here, and finally where it is based. That's what people do. In the civilian one, exactly the same, civil aircraft markings, in here you will have different aircraft, again, registration number, who the owner is, and where they are. Now with number crunchers, some people, they write it down in a normal book, in a notepad, they put the date down, again, the serial number, the registration, whatever it is, and where they've seen it. Some people would just highlight that in the book. That is for number crunchers and dot spotters. As an aviation photographer, Sometimes I highlight in the book that I've seen it, so it's just a just something that people do within the hobby. So let's move on to cameras. Cameras is for the aviation photographers as well as the, the number crunchers. Number crunchers may take a camera with them, take a picture from over the fence, get hold of the camera, look at the picture, and then write down the serial number that they've seen that aircraft. Again, cameras depend on your um, experience you may want to go straight in and buy an expensive camera a high-end class or you might want to go for the cheaper version and build yourself up and upgrade until you feel confident enough for that camera when I was younger I started off with the 350d then the 450d and then I went to the 7d and then now I'm at the 7d mark 2 which is classed as a high-end camera you could end up with the um, mark 1 uh, seven, uh, the uh, 1D, whatever it's classed, that is would be the top. Um, there are many versions out there. Again, with an icon, they've got different cameras for different um, stages of your confidence within cameras. With the camera, you also need a half decent lens. It's important as having a decent body and a rubbish lens. You need a half decent lens. That would be from a, a fantastic shot to a mediocre shot. So that's another thing you need to be thinking about, what kind of lens you want. It depends on the focal size. Would you want a 300 mil, a 400 mil, a 200 mil? It all depends on what kind of aviation photography you are going to be doing. If you're going to air shows, you want to reach further away. So a free 400, 500, 600 mil lens is perfect. If you want close up pictures, you are gonna be looking at the smaller end. I have a 70 to 200 and recently had the 300. Previously, I've also had a 500. I've removed the 500 and I was happy with the 300. Don't forget, you can also have a converter. You can have a 1.4 and a two times converter, which fits on the end of the lens to go into the body. The only downside I found with a converter, and this is my personal opinion, is that two times made the pictures a little bit softer. The 1.4 was just the perfect size for that. So let's start looking at cameras. So I've got a, a Canon uh, 7D Mark II, which is the high end, and that cost me uh, over a thousand pound. If you haven't got that kind of money, let's start looking at the 80D, which is around about 700 pound. This comes with a 45 point across um, focus, which is pretty good. Uh, you've also got a 24.2 megapixel, and also it has an intelligent viewfinder, which covers 100% um, of what you're after. And it also has uh, a chance of shooting videos, which is uh, a pretty good, and also comes with Wi-Fi. And that is the ATD for Canon. So moving on to the next Canon. The next Canon is the 1300. Now this comes with 18 megapixels. Obviously we're going down a little bit, 
pricing round about the £350 mark. So this would be a pretty good camera to start with. It also has a nine point autofocus. So we've gone from a 65, which is mine at the 7, uh, 7D Mark II, to a 45, which was the 80D. And now we've gone down again to the 1300, the Canon 1300, sorry, and that's got a nine um, autofocus point. So you can see the difference straight away. Doesn't make much difference in um, the camera itself and your ability to shoot photography and aviation. It just means you've got less um, guidance or uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Help when it comes to actually pinpointing and focusing onto that aircraft. This also comes with Wi-Fi, this one. So again, you could connect directly to Wi-Fi and put straight away on social media, on YouTube, or whatever you want to do. That's exactly the same as the A2D, and also with the 7D Mark II. So all three ca cameras are pretty good cameras. You've got this one here, the 1300 at the lower end, the A2D at medium, and then the 7D Mark II at the very high end. That's the Canons. Let's move on to Nikons. So you're going to have to bear with me because I'm not a Nikon person. Again, a Canon or a Nikon. Um, my personal opinion is that uh, Canon make a fantastic lens, but the body is a bit complicated. Nikon, I think the body's great, but their lenses aren't up to spec. If they could have an adapter that would work for both, it'd be great, but unfortunately they don't. So you're gonna have to pick which camera you prefer. So that will come down. I would personally go to a shop and try a camera body and sip, see which one you prefer. I've always liked Canons. A friend of mine, he likes Nikons. Um, but it's it's down to your preference, what you prefer. So let's look at the, uh, the Nikon 850. Now this is the high end of um, a camera. This has a 45.7 megapixels. What an amazing camera that was going to be. But the price range, two and a half thousand pounds. Straight away, you've got to be thinking to yourself, that is a lot of money. It also has Bluetooth, um, and it's an amazing bit of kit. That is one hell of a camera. Um, it was um, made in 2017, so that's going to be a high end. That would be something I would consider after I've got something a bit cheaper and got more experience with it. So looking at the cheaper end, you have the Nikon D3200. Now this comes with a 24.2 megapixel and it's sitting around about the £300 mark. So it's still not a bad price and a good camera to start off with. So again, it's your choice, Nikon or Canon. It depends which one you prefer. Like I said previously, Nikon, I prefer the bodies, but unfortunately the lenses don't hit the spot for me. And for the Canon, I find the, the body can be complicated for the new beginner, but the lenses, as you adapt, are a lot better. So let's start looking at lenses for the bodies. Now, with the Canon, uh, I've got the Canon D, uh, 7D Mark II. You could be looking at something like the 70-200 f2.8, which is um, a fantastic bit of lens. It will help with the small... Um, aircraft, it will also help when you're at Heathrow or when the aircraft are close to you. Um, it will give you the light, when the light's low it will help you with the light. Um, but this would be for something that's close by, it wouldn't be long distance. Long distance you'd be looking at a 100 to 400 lens. Now that would give you a uh, scope it's a zoom lens that would, again, like the 70 to 200, it's a zoom lens, it zooms in and out. That will help you with aircraft very, very close to aircraft a long distance, but not as far as well as the um, 600 mil lens. Personally, I think the one to 400 mil lens is a good lens to have. Um, there is a new version out and uh, you're looking around about the 1,500 pound mark for uh, the Canon 72-200 um, lens. Um, well, let's move on to the next one. So the 100 by 400 mil lens is the next lens. Now this is sitting around about 2000 pound mark. This again would be good for um, close up aircraft because you've got the 100 mil. 
you've also got the 400 which should give you a longer distance you could probably put a converter on that um, and then that makes it even bigger be a perfect lens for um, air shows um, and aircraft that are flying fragments say through mac loop um, which i will go through in the next two or three tutorials that i'm going to be doing that's something you'll be thinking about where you're going to be shooting what kind of lens you're going to need again the smaller lens will be for close-ups if you're going to a night shoot or if you're doing statics at an air show to something like the 100 by 400 if you're at an air show put a converter on it and it will give you double the length you need uh, again you've got to be thinking about the f-stops which the settings i will go through in other tutorials so the next question what is a prime a prime lens is a fixed focal lens so a 400 mil there's no one to 400 it's directly 400 but it's sturdy it's big it gives you what you need at the distance good price as well nearly four thousand pound personally if i was a newcomer to the hobby i would get a small lens a 55 mil lens 85 mil something like that that would get you aircraft on a static so for example, say if you're an air show and you want pictures of static aircraft that's a perfect lens there 70 to 200 will give you aircraft on the runway just about to take off or on approach landing next one 400 to, uh, 100 to 400 will give you aircraft flying in the display um, on approach etc or just taken off they they're the three lenses I would consider now let's look at uh, the Nikon lenses and see what they offer for those so I'm not really up to speed with the Nikons as being a Canon user but the principle is exactly the same um, they do have some fantastic lenses for the cameras uh, they do have a 50 to 500 they also have a 18 to 300 and that's what you got to be thinking about what size lens do you require for the photography or the the task that you need it for also what camera you need do you want to go straight into the high end or do you want to start at the low end and build yourself up they're the principles you've got to be thinking about so moving forward my next uh, tutorials I will show you the camera settings and then obviously the locations we need to go to and all principles of the hobby if you've got any comments please do put them below please do subscribe uh, it's more more than uh, appreciated for, for all the comments and the descriptions and all the views um, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you next week thank you very much bye bye